VMware introduced fault tolerance at VMworld in 2008 as a completely new way to think about guest redundancy. <laughs> this gave IT organizations the ability to provide continuous availability for critical services in the event of a host failure. Fault tolerance is different from high availability because it creates a secondary copy of the virtual machine. Instructions and events that are executed on the primary VM are recorded and then replayed on the secondary through a process called VLockstep. Since the state of the secondary VM is identical to that of the primary, it can take over the instant that the primary stops sending heartbeats. Let's take a look at VLockstep. In this example, we have an FTP server which is protected by fault tolerance. We'll initiate a file transfer from our workstation and then perform a hard shutdown of the primary VM's host. After a brief pause, the secondary VM takes over without interrupting the file transfer. Even after a host failure in the data center, the file transfer completes and we're able to open the file. As soon as the secondary VM takes over for the primary, a new secondary is created on another host in the cluster. There are limitations to what fault tolerance will protect against, and in vSphere 5, fault tolerance could only be used for a limited number of workloads. In vSphere 6, some of these limitations are lifted. VMs with up to four CPUs are supported, and storage can be replicated to a second data store. The old VLockstep technology records instructions and replays them on the secondary VM, while the new fast checkpointing method executes the same instruction stream on both VMs simultaneously. This increases the demand for networking, and a 10 gig connection is now required between your physical hosts. Because of all this replication, the VM does take a performance hit. Let's compare a 4 CPU VM that is protected by fault tolerance with one that isn't. The fault tolerance protected VM took about 4 seconds longer and received a lower Cinebench score. These lab results are comparable to an Intel i5 processor with four cores. Some of the other new features with support for multiprocessor fault tolerance are the ability to backup and snapshot fault tolerance VMs. vMotion is supported as well, and now you can provision your fault tolerance VMs with thin storage. With the latest release of vSphere 6, fault tolerance is now a viable option for many workloads. Thanks for watching. I'm Matt Bradford of VMSpot.